Hi, it's me, Blueprint. Despite the fact that I spend hours and hours each month trying to make scientifically accurate videos to share with you, the audience, I'm not perfect. I still sometimes get it wrong, such as the case with the right hand rule. In the past, I've said this. If your index finger, if we let that represent the direction that current is flowing through a wire, and your middle finger represent the direction that the magnetic north is pointed, then now your thumb represents the direction of the force that that conductor will feel. But as vigilant commenters pointed out over and over again, the right hand rule as I presented it isn't actually correct, and these two fingers should actually be swapped. <sighs> And here I was led to believe that the right hand rule actually represented the cross product of the equation IL cross B, but I guess not. So you can put that in your pipe and smoke it, Randy Knight. I know better than to argue with people on the internet. Like any PR department will tell you, the customer is always right. As such, I would like to apologize to you, the viewer, for this error the few times that I have made it and that I will endeavor to do better to satisfy you, the viewer. Now that I got that out of the way, I can move on to a project I've always wanted to do that uses the right hand rule. Mm. Not that one, our new right hand rule, given to us by the all-knowing YouTube commenters. So, I want to make a railgun. So, in order to make a railgun, you need a magnetic field and a current that are perpendicular to one another to get a force in the forward direction. So I've started with a long line of magnets that are glued to the table. This will create a magnetic field pointed upward. Next I want to add two conducting rails that sit just above the magnets with an aluminum projectile that shorts between the two rails. So if I apply a positive voltage here and a negative voltage here, I can get a current to move sideways, jumping between the two rails through the projectile. Which means if we use our new right hand rule, and the magnetic field is pointed up, and the current is going that way, our force must be going forward. Now we're talking about a lot of current here, hundreds or thousands of amps, which isn't easy to come by. It'll take my prized 3000 farad capacitor in order to supply that much power. Alright, we're all set up. I have two cameras running so that we don't miss a thing. One pointed at me and one pointed at the target on the other end of the room. My capacitor is all charged up, so let's watch this work. I'm beginning to think that there might be some misunderstanding about how to use the right hand rule. You know, while I was waiting for a liver transplant, I decided to research what the right hand rule actually means, and I bet the commenters thought that I was using Fleming's right hand rule incorrectly. Well, sorry to say, I wasn't. Fleming's right hand rule has everything to do with the work being done on fields, but the right hand rules that I've been using are the fields being the ones doing the work. Basically speaking, my right hand rules have to do with motors, those have to do with generators. The right hand rule is, after all, just a cross product of any two vectors. A little parting advice. Don't get so hung up on the shortcuts that you forget what you're doing. Gosh, I hope none of those commenters have tried building railguns. <laughs> 